Huskies come into this one on an eight-game winning streak. The hottest team in the league right now after they knocked off the previous hottest team in the league, the Texas A&M Corpus Christi Islanders, last uh, Wednesday night uh, here on the home floor. 94-80 to 80 was the final there. The Huskies with a big 14-point win defending the home floor to move them to 11-6 and six in the Southland Conference. It clinched a number four seed in the tournament next week. And uh, they could rise right now as high as a three, depending on the outcome of some games going on right now and their game tonight. But we'll talk about that as we go throughout the evening. But uh, the Huskies are riding high and want to come in tonight, not only to, to keep this win streak alive, but to be playing well going into the Southland Conference Tournament next week. And... Uh, see how far they can advance in uh, that uh, series coming up starting for them uh, next Thursday evening. We've got uh, a lot to get to and a short time to get there, so we're going to break it right here. When we come back, we're going to talk about this opponent tonight, the Abilene Christian Wildcats with assistant coach Keith Burrard, and then we will also chat with the head coach, Ron Cottrell, about this game and the significance of it and senior night as well here as five Huskies players are playing in their final home game at Sharp and then we'll have all the play-by-play for you and that's coming up straight ahead right here on the Huskies Sports Network. At Houston Federal Credit Union, we're dedicated to our members, our communities, and now the students, faculty, and employees of Houston Baptist University. From checking and savings accounts to loans, IRAs, money markets, and other financial tools, HFCU is ready to serve the HBU Huskies and their fans. Learn more today. Call 866-OUR-HFCU or log on to HoustonFCU.org. Houston Federal Credit Union and the HBU Huskies, that's a doggone good team. Houston Federal Credit Union is federally insured by NCUA. The body is incredibly powerful. It's so nimble and fluid, but sometimes we push it too far. That's when you need the strength of Memorial Hermann and our body of affiliated orthopedic specialists. With our renowned Ironman Sports Medicine Institute, they not only get your body back to where it was, they get it to go further. It's what makes us more than just hospitals. We are a body of experts. Memorial Hermann, advancing health. But what about you? When you text that really cute guy you met at a party. Pre-game report. It's time to focus our eye on the opponent tonight. It's the Abilene Christian Wildcats. Visiting with Keith Berard and Keith talking about the regular season finale. Man, it, it's hard to believe we're already at the end of the regular season. It seemed like just yesterday we were just ramping this thing up and getting ready to go on the road for some non-conference games. Exactly. I was just talking with, uh, I think, one of the players, one of the freshmen maybe, and was letting them know, like, man, it seems like we were just packing to go to Indiana not too long ago, and now the season is, you know, the regular season is coming to an end. So uh, my point to him was, man, just – realize it's going to go fast uh <laughs> so we you need to make sure you know we're getting things taken care of in the classroom and on the floor but you know you think you have four years it's going to be a while but it, it goes by pretty fast nowadays and coming off a big win on wednesday night over a&m corpus christi that uh, kind of brought them back to you and the, you guys have a chance to, to finish you know maybe a two or three seed now uh it had to be a big game, but you can't let that overshadow what's ahead of you tonight. Uh, definitely not. Uh, you know, we, you have to treat every game as a big game. I mean, it's one game at a time. You can't look ahead. You can't look, you know, in the past. So uh, with, you know, the game that we played Wednesday, that was, you know, definitely a, a big game for us in the terms of that night. And, you know, now it set us up for this game here tonight where, you know, there's plenty of possibilities where, you know, where things can happen right now. Well, Abilene Christian, it's, it's they, they've always kind of been a thorn in our side since we've gotten into the conference with them, and uh, uh, they've they've been an up and down team this year. Knocked off Sam Houston State a couple of weeks ago on the road in Huntsville, then go home and lose to Incarnate Word. What what kind of a read do you get on this team? 
Well, that's been the league all year, I think. You know, it's it's been wide open, so it's not just – you know how it's been dominated the last three years by one team. I mean, this year it, we we said at the beginning of the year that it will probably come down to someone having either five or six losses and, and we'll be able to win the conference. So, you know, teams, some teams, like you know, that night it just might be on, and some nights it's not. So, you know, you hope to, that it's on when you're playing all your home games because you definitely want to protect home floor. Uh, but to go on the road and get a couple, that's that's even sweeter. What uh, specifically is kind of challenging, or who do you do you have to watch out for on this Wildcats team? Um, looking at Jaron, I mean, yeah, Jaron Lewis. I'm sorry, and uh, Franklin, the point guard, and Lewis. Uh, you know, those those are two key guys for them. For them, uh, you know, I keep hearing Friday might not play tonight, so uh, he's a big he's a big factor for him. I mean, he's a freshman that's had a great year. And I'm sure, you know, they're surely going to miss him. But those other two guys, I think they'll they'll pick it up for him. I mean, uh, Lewis is he's kind of a tough, tough matchup. Six, six can go inside out. Uh, so we, you know, we're looking forward to the challenge from both of them. And Franklin, he's just a big burly point guard that, you know, can get to the basket at almost any time. So uh, our main thing is making sure that our defense is, you know, is going to be on point tonight. We have to help each other out. And. It's like four or maybe five guys on their roster that shoot at least 40% from the three-point line. They're a pretty good three-point shooting team. Definitely. Uh, Drake Green is lighting it up. I, and it's not at, just at home. On the road, I understand he's shooting like 46% from the three. So, And then uh, number 15, Farquhar. Farquhar, I'm sorry. Uh, he's a big He's a big guy, 6'7", six, 6'8", six, that is a post but can step out and shoot the three. So... Uh, they'll run some sets for him to, you know, especially if they feel they have a, a mismatch, if we have a bigger guy on them, to have him step out and try to hit, knock down a couple shots or maybe use his shot fake and get to the basket. But, I mean, this is a very good three-point shooting team, so we definitely must do a great job of running them off the line tonight. Well, and 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 how do you do that? I know you guys like to mix it up defensively a, a lot of the time, but does that call for more man-to-man, -man or is it you can't leave them alone out there to, to take those big big time long shots? Yes, it's a little bit of both. Uh, I think we played a lot more man uh, for the last past, you know past couple of games. We'll try to mix in a little zone every now and again, but uh, it's just sticking with our man principles. Uh, the things that have gotten us here thus far, uh, it's working. So we just have to. Utilize those and just keep and just keep working hard defensively. I told the guys earlier today, you know, this team here likes to run quite a few sets, so it's not like we're we're going to sit here and guard for 15 seconds. We have to be prepared to guard for 30 seconds. You know, the entire shot clock. Shot clock. So, uh, just us doing what we do, I think, is you know, it's worked, and we just have to keep it up and step it up a notch. You know, make sure we're closing out. We're not hopping or skipping out there. We're actually sprinting out there to close out and make them put it on the ground and force them towards our help. You know, it's it's got to be nice on one hand to come in, come into this last game tonight, knowing that you're already in the tournament. And you can be no worse than the fourth seed, no matter what happens tonight. But on the other hand, you've got that little winning streak. It'd be nice to go into the tournament next week uh, with that still intact and, and and a hot hand going into the week ahead. Oh, definitely. You want to keep the the streak going. Never want to lose, especially going into next week. Uh, we've had some success the last eight games and want to keep that going. You know, hopefully tonight we can come out and play well. Uh, but it's, it's definitely one of those things you, you don't want to lose, like I said, going into the tournament. Then some of the guys that, that might be on their minds and everything and you don't realize the things that we've accomplished already. So and we're playing at home. You know, you want to send the seniors out on a, on a great night as well. I mean, this is their last time playing in, in Sharp, Texas. So, <laughs> you know, those guys have, have hung in here for the last four years and, you know, have had a lot of ups and downs. And, you know, to send them out on a winning note would be great. Well, let's go get one. Good luck tonight. Appreciate it, Lonnie. Keith Barrar, assistant coach for the Huskies. We're going to take a timeout and come back with more on the Huskies pregame report after this. Good ...of electric workers, local 716 in Houston, Get up for work each day because we believe building schools to code matters. Because building Houston's hospitals correctly saves lives. Because training for 10,000 hours makes a difference. That's why we get up, because we want to make a difference. To be the best, hire the best. IBEW, where skill and value lock arms. The time is now to hire IBEW electricians. At Doubletree by Hilton, 
We believe in nice. Not your okay, fine, just being polite kind of nice, but a genuine nice. The kind that's contagious, that you can't help but take with you. The kind of nice you want to share with others. But don't take our word for it. Come for a stay and help us prove nice travels. Book at DoubleTree.com. This is the HBU Husky Sports Network, powered by Legacy Sports. chat with the head coach of the Huskies, Ron Cottrell, as we get ready for the regular season finale tonight against the Abilene Christian Wildcats, the only game we've got against Abilene Christian this season. And, Coach, uh, man, it's hard to believe that we're already at the end of the regular season. It seems like we just get going a couple of months ago, and now here we are. And uh, thankfully not at the end of the season, but at the end of the regular season. Well, it's, it does seem as though it's kind of flown by here of late, and I guess any time you're having success, you want to extend, and and uh, and so you want to keep going, and, and certainly we're in a position right now where we want to continue to, to keep playing as long as we possibly can with this group. It's certainly been a, a terrific group to coach, and, and uh, we're looking forward to what happens tonight and, and hopefully come out and play well for our seniors and then head into the tournament. Well, eight wins in a row coming into this one, and the latest one, uh, an victory over Texas A&M Corpus Christi, who was maybe uh, just a little bit hotter than you guys even coming into that one. And uh, you defended the home floor well in that one, handled uh, their their scoring punch. Uh, yeah, uh, it, it's, hard to say, it, it's hard to seem like this is a fact, but you really held Rashawn Thomas kind of in check in that game and did a good job defensively on him, I thought. Well, you know, I don't know that you ever can completely stop him, but I think we, we made it tough on him. I think we made him have to work to get the points that he got, and, and I think that was important when we played down in, in Corpus Christi. I think it came too easily for him, and and so we had to, you know, really kind of put some pressure on him, make him have to, to do some extra work to get his shots and, and, and get his points, and I think we were successful in doing that and and uh, played played a pretty good ball uh, ball game all overall for, for both ends of the floor for our team. And and uh, fortunate enough to get the win. You know there were some seating implications coming into the weekend here with all the games uh, coming into this one. And by the time we get underway tonight, some of those will already be done. Are you, do you allow yourself to to look at that before you go out there? And does it impact how you prepare for this game? Well, I, I, I know that the assistants have spent a lot of time looking at all the different possibilities. I've tried to kind of stay away from it as much as I can and, and really focus on our team. It's hard to to not discuss and, and at least talk about the, the possibility of, of a conference co-championship that's that's pretty easy one to to figure out what the what the scenarios are and and what the ramifications are on on uh whether you win or lose and things like that but uh just the fact that we were uh we're in the hunt going into the to the last game of the of the regular season for a conference championship i think is is such a tremendous honor to the guys that have that have represented our school and our and our team this year and and you know we're we're happy uh, we're in the discussion. We're we're in we're in the hunt at the end, and and uh, now it's a matter of getting into postseason and see what happens. You know, and uh, as as much as you'd like to go in as as the highest possible seed, I would imagine that for you, it's as important to go in. Uh, playing as well as you have been and to continue that uh, with this game tonight yeah that's the most important thing at this point i think it, once we get there it's it's really about who's playing well and and we've been playing pretty well to this point we've got to continue to find ways to 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 you know, continue to improve, and and uh, it's you know it's important for us to play well tonight, and and certainly winning it, it, you know it changes seedings and does a lot of things with with who we play and when we play and all that. But more than anything, I want to see our group play well tonight. Abilene Christian tonight. This is a team that's kind of been up and down this season. They had a big win on the road at Sam Houston State last week, and then came up short uh, against Incarnate Word at home. It's it's kind of a hard team to get a read on. They are a team that can really, really shoot the three. Uh, I think they're second in the, in the conference in three-point uh, percentage behind Central Arkansas and and uh, shoot a high number of threes. And, and it's just a team that if you don't 
do a good job of defending, you're you're in for a long night. And and uh, you know they they typically play really really well in their home court. And and uh, but the, you know they they were able to go to Sam, and you know Sam's playing pretty well right now. And then and then uh, got tripped up back at home, and that's. You know, it's that time of year. I mean, you just never know what you're what you're going to run into. You, you, there's there's buzz saws all over our league, and and uh, and so you better be ready to play on a given night. And certainly tonight, I'm I'm sure they're going to be ready to play for our senior night. So, uh, speaking of seniors, uh, the, there are five guys that are playing their final regular season home game in Sharp Gym, uh, and and four of those guys have been around here for for four years and and become really the core group of this team this season. Talk about your seniors uh, on this, their final home night. Well, it's certainly a special group. Uh, when you when you look at having five seniors, four of which have been here since their freshman year, uh, and that coincided with our entry into the Southland Conference and, and really have gone from that very first year finishing dead last, 13th place, to now going into the last night of the season with a possibility of a chance to win a conference championship. That, that that tells you everything I think you need to know about what they've been able to do to help our program. We, we've steadily made progress as they've grown, and 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 so it's been a a really special group to coach. And you you add a Tief in there this year, and he certainly added uh, something to our team. There, there, he's an aggressive, hard nosed player who can can really step up to uh, the physicality and and everything we need on the defensive end, particularly, uh, and really get, kind of gave us an extra little punch for this group and. And uh, but I mean, the, the, each one of these guys that have, that have been here, this this group of seniors is 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 really special. That they, they, they all have done done tremendous things on and off the court for our program. Uh, they're going to be tremendously missed. We're just excited that they've been a part of us and will continue to be a part of our family uh, from now on. And and so so happy to see them have the success they've had. Yeah, and it's kind of hard to get too sentimental right now because you've got at least another week of basketball and, and hopefully a little more maybe beyond that. Yeah, you know, the main thing is that this is our last chance to play in Sharp and and in front of many of our home fans that may not be able to get out to Katy, but hopefully will. We, we really want to see a really great crowd come out there. But it is a, a chance to, to get these guys out here and, and on on the court and sharp and, and play their last game, honor them a little bit before the game, and then and then get our minds around getting ready for a, a ball game against a really tough Abilene Christian team. But uh, we've got a lot of basketball hopefully still to play, and, and uh, the main thing is these guys are staying focused in on, on what they have to do to get better. Good luck tonight. All right, thank you. Ron Cottrell, the head coach of the Huskies, will take a timeout and come back with more on the Huskies pregame report after this. Are you a graduate of Houston Baptist University? Did you know the value of your degree increases when you actively participate in the HBU Alumni Association? Your Alumni Association actively supports the growth, retention, and ranking of our school by our scholarship efforts. Husky Alumni Network volunteers actively work to recruit the best and brightest to HBU, and we promote and support programs intended to build a growing network of people committed to quality, higher Christian education through our alumni scholarship efforts. We also work to strengthen the bond between our university and the community, and we're your connection to over 18,000 fellow alumni, mostly in and around the Houston metro area. Log on to learn more about our mission and your privileges and benefits at hbu.edu slash alumni. And find us via social media on Facebook at the Houston Baptist University Alumni Association page and on Twitter and Instagram at hbu underscore alumni. But no matter how you do it, connect with the HBU Alumni Association because a strong alumni base equals a strong HBU. Ten years of intensity. Ten years of dunks. Ten years of three-pointers. 10 years of drives, 10 years of teamwork, 10 years of leadership, 10 years of hustle, 10 years of champions, a decade in Katy. The 2017 Southland Basketball Tournament, March 8th through the 12th at the Merrill Center. Go to Ticketmaster.com or Southland School Ticket Offices. This is the HBU Husky Sports Network, powered by Legacy Sports. Back here at Sharp Gym, just about set to go with tonight's opening tip. Lonnie King along with you. As we are 
just a couple of minutes away from the opening tip of this game as the seniors here on the Huskies 2016-2017 uh, roster were recognized here before the fans at Sharp Gym and honored by head coach Ryan Cottrell, uh, training staff as well, a anyone who's a senior associated with the men's basketball program honored tonight in this, the final home game for, for that crew uh, here at Sharp, Texas. Now, thankfully, as we mentioned in the opening tonight, this isn't the last basketball that any of them will participate in for HBU because next week the tournament gets underway over in Katy, and we want you to be out there for that. You can check in at hbuhuskies.com slash tickets for uh, the information on getting your tickets for the Southland Conference Tournament games. We know the Huskies will uh, have a bye in the first round. First round begins Wednesday night over at the Merrill Center in Katy, but the Huskies will play uh, the winner of one of those games on Thursday night at the very earliest. We'll see, depending on the outcome here tonight, whether or not uh, they're going to have uh, two nights off. The one and two seeds get buys until the semifinal round, which would be Friday night. Three and four seeds get uh, first round buys, which would mean they get underway Thursday night. But, you know, in the situation... Uh, that the Huskies are in right now, the way they've been playing lately. It's almost one of those things where you're not sure if you'd want to get that uh, double buy because you, then you sit around for a couple of days while you watch uh, other teams face off against each other on the floor, and uh, you hope you can heat it back up after sitting for a couple of days watching other teams play to make their way to you. So it has its pros and cons, and no matter what, the Huskies – will likely be prepared to go uh, when that time comes here next week, uh, beginning Thursday night for the Huskies. But by the end of this evening, we should have a pretty good idea of where they will sit and where they will go in and uh, may even by that time have a good idea of who uh, they might face and who the first round matchups will feature uh, in the tournament next week. Right now, though, the business at hand is to take on the Abilene Christian Wildcats. And this team uh, coming in to this game tonight brings a record with them of 13 and 15 overall. They're 7 and 10 in the Southland Conference. And uh, under head coach Joe Golding, they will send out this starting lineup, first of all. A 6'2 sophomore from Jacksonville, Arkansas, and Parkview High School, averaging 10.9 points per game. Jalen Franklin gets the start. Jaron Lewis, a 6'6 sophomore, one-year uh, varsity letterman from Orlando, Florida, and Lake Highland Prep, averaging 13.4 points per game, is in the lineup as well. They'll be joined by Hayden Farquhar, a 6'7 sophomore from Throckmorton High School in Throckmorton, Texas. He averages 6.3 points, 3.2 rebounds per game. In the backcourt, a 6'1 junior from Baltimore, Maryland, future college prep, averaging 6.3 per game. Isaiah Tripp, and then rounding out the starting five, a 6'3 junior from Clear Lake High School right here in the Houston area, Drake Green averaging 5.8 points per game. They're a very good sh uh, three-point shooting team, but they will be without one of their best tonight. 6'9 freshman from Oklahoma City, Jelani Friday, will not play tonight for the Wildcats. So uh, the Huskies will not face that tough task, but uh, still plenty of firepower for the Wildcats coming in to this one tonight for the Huskies. Here's the starting lineup, and it's going to be seniors across the board getting the start here tonight. Coach Cottrell going with his five seniors to start this game in the backcourt. That means we will see Reveal Chukujeku get the start at one guard, the 6'3 senior from Straight Jesuit here in Houston. He'll be joined by the 6'5 senior transfer from Pepperdine University in Seven Lakes High School in the Katy area, Atif 
Russell on the wings for the Huskies. The 6'7 senior from Wartburg, Tennessee and Wartburg Central High School, Alex Fountain. He'll be joined by the 6'7 senior from Anchorage, Alaska, three-year letterman. Over uh, 1,200 points in his career here, averaging 15.1 per game this season. Coulter Lasher, and then in the middle, 6'9 senior from Hoisington, Kansas, Cody Stetler rounds out the starting five. So Coach Cottrell allowing the seniors to get out there and get things going tonight. We'll see how long Coach goes with them. But it'll be Stett in the middle. Huskies in the home white uniforms tonight with the blue letters and numbers, orange trim on the jerseys and shorts, the Husky head logo on the sides of the shorts. Abilene Christian in the road, purple uniforms with the white letters and numbers. ACU over the numbers on the front of the jersey. Gray and white trim on the shirts and the shorts. Stetler in the middle jumping it up against Hayden Farquhar. And Pat Bay, our lead official tonight, tosses it up and it's controlled by Abilene Christian and we are underway. Glad you're along for the ride. A lob down inside to Hayden Farquhar. Huskies lost him, left him all alone. And he gets the easy layup. It's two nothing, Abilene Christian. Out top, Stetler goes left side to Lasher. Swing it cross court to Chukwajekwu. Screen from Stetler, wants to go to the baseline on the give and go, pick and roll, but couldn't find Stett and goes cross court instead. Lasher, top of the arc, gets it to Fountain, down low, they go to Stetler, face up, turn around floater, off the iron, won't go in the rebound controlled by the Wildcats. Bringing it back, Jalen Franklin, moving right to left here in the first half, swing it in the corner to Drake Green, his jumper from the baseline won't go. Chukujeku with another rebound for the Huskies, averaging a double-double during this little eight-game winning streak for the Huskies. Fountain lobs it down in the post to Stetler, cross-court, swing it to Russell, baseline left side, drives in, backs out, goes out on the angle to Lasher. Cole will get a screen from Stett, but goes left instead. Now the screen set up for Russell. Shot won't go in the rebound, pulled down by Jaron Lewis. Lewis will leave it for Franklin and Abilene back the other way. 2-0, Abilene Christian early on here, minute and a half into the game. Franklin in the corner, Farquhar is going to put up a three from the baseline. Shot won't go and the rebound tipped by Stetler. Couldn't hang on, but Chukujeku right there to get the carom. Here's Lasher, goes inside, and he's going to be fouled on the arm going up. And let's see who the personal is going to be charged to. It's going to be on. Isaiah Tripp. Tripp with the first personal of the ball game. And they're going to say it was before the shot, so Lasher will not go to the line. Checking in for the Huskies, Braxton Bonds and Josh Ibarra. As Stetler and Fountain will go to the bench. There's the ball on the miss, tipped out of bounds by Abilene Christian, Huskies basketball. So three seniors stay out there, Russell, Lasher, and Chukujeku, and Ibarra, the junior. Bonds, the sophomore, check in. And Ibarra in the paint, going to turn around, float it up. Shot won't go. The rebound is tipped. Back to Josh. Swing it around. Leave Coulter open for a three, and he's got it. Lasher with a big tray, and if he gets heated up early, that's good news for the Huskies. Thought he had 30, a new career high the other night, and it turned out the scoreboard was wrong, and so he wound up with 28, which matched his career high. He matched his career high. Revealed Chukujeku matched his career high with 23. Here's Farquhar going to answer with a three of his own from the right left, uh, left baseline. And they take the lead right back, 5-3. We told you these guys can shoot three-pointers. Lob inside, down to Ibarra, can't finish it off. Josh tips it around, and it's saved by Chukujeku, and he's going to be fouled. Reaching in by Jaron Lewis. He will draw the personal. 
And that'll be the second foul on Abilene Christian. Huskies basketball trailing by two, 17-17 to go. Russell on the baseline will get it inbounds, lobs it out to Josh Ibarra, and he'll go out top to Lasher. Back to Atif, sets up right angle to Bonds. Bonds drives in, scoops it high off the window, can't get it to go, missed the rim, and comes off to Lewis. Lewis will leave it for Franklin. He'll slowly bring it up across the timeline. 5-3 Abilene with the two-point lead. Three minutes and change into this game. Down low, Franklin feeds it on the baseline to Lewis. Drives in, little baby hook with the right hand. Reversed his move and spun it in with the right hand. Gets it to go, and it's 7-3 Wildcats. Russell out top to Ibarra. Good crowd is fouled in here tonight for senior night. And they're still coming in. Here's Lasher for another three. Colts got six, and the Huskies are back to within one. 7-6, 16-16 to go in the first half of play. Fans want some defense. Farquhar picks it up out time. We've got a whistle away from the basketball. Foul's going to be called on reveal. Chukujekwu trying to fight through a screen and it's called for the push. First foul of the game on the Huskies. And to the baseline, Franklin will get it in. They swing it around the arc, back to Franklin, left corner. Tried to pass it out, almost stolen by Bonds, but saved out to Farquhar. Three from the right angle, and he rips the cord. Aiden Farquhar's got eight points now. Eight of their ten, and it's a 10-6 lead for the Wildcats. Chukujeku out top. Dribbles in, free throw line jumper, puts it up, shot won't go. The rebound pulled down by Jaron Lewis. Check it, that is Drake Green who comes away with the board. Green to Franklin, Franklin to Lewis. Lewis drives in over Lasher, can't get it to go. Gets his own miss and puts it back up and in off the window. And they've doubled up the Huskies early here, 12-6. 15-15 left to go in the first half. Bonds holds it up out top, goes to Chukudeku, right side to Atif Russell. Back to Braxton Bonds, give it to Ibarra, get it right back, drive it in, float it off the window with the right hand from the left side. Gets it to go, and it's back down to four, 12-8. Under 15 minutes to go now until halftime. Green. Cross court to Tripp. Tripp holds it up, picked up by Chukujeku. Spins it left side to Green. Bounce pass back to Tripp in the right corner. Looked at a three, but instead goes out to Franklin. Franklin has it tipped and stripped. Long outlet up ahead. Bonds saves it underneath and lays it up and in for two. Abilene Christian coaches up off the bench arguing that Bonds didn't reestablish position before he touched the ball on the baseline, but the officials gave it to him, and it's a two-point game, 12-10 with 14.08 to go. Still looking for our first time out of the game. Here's a feed down low to Jaron Lewis, and he takes it right to the rack and goes off the glass and down through for two. 14-10, Abilene Christian. Chuku Jaku Dribbles out top, takes it in, loses control. It's going to go out of bounds. It's off of Tripp and the Wildcats. And it stops the clock with 13.49 to go here in the first half. So end-to-end action. And we go a long way into this one before we hit immediate timeout. But there is a timeout on the floor. Huskies trail by four early in this one, 14-10 on the Husky Sports Network. Are you looking for a totally free checking account? Houston Federal Credit Union has it, and it's packed with free services like mobile banking with person-to-person transfers and mobile bill pay. And Houston Federal Credit Union is a proud supporter of HBU Athletics. So stop by their office at 6808 Bentliff Drive and experience a better way of banking. Visit HoustonFCU.org for more information. Houston Federal Credit Union, the official credit union of HBU. Houston Federal Credit Union is federally insured by NCUA. We're passionate delivering expert neurological care for adults and children. 
We're dedicated, responding to neurotrauma and stroke with LifeLight in our Level 1 Trauma Center. We're persistent, restoring lives at our Tier Rehabilitation and Research Hospital. We are Memorial Hermann. And we're making neuroscience breakthroughs every day. Thirteen forty nine to go. Abilene Christian is out of the gates on fire tonight. Six for nine from the floor and two of four from the three point line. And here's a steal on the inbounds pass. And with a run out, Jalen Franklin's going to get a layup and increases the lead to six, 16 10. So now they're seven for 10 from the floor to start this, shooting 70% early in this game. Huskies hoping to try and cool them off here. Lasher drives in, leave it in the corner for Tief Russell. Fake move to the baseline, didn't lift the pivot foot. Passes it back to Coulter, down to seven on the shot clock. Get it off to Bonds, he's gonna fire up a three and Braxton with the long distance dial up. Drops it in and the Huskies are back to within three. 16-13. Fountain back to the scorer's table. Asa Cantwell is gonna join him there. They will check in on the next stoppage. We roll down under 13 minutes to go in the first half. Lewis drives in, gonna float up a shot, won't go. The rebound is tipped by Chuku Jaku, but right back to Lewis. In the paint, puts it up, missed, and this time Ibarra clears it for the Huskies. Off to Bonds, up ahead to Russell, in a hurry, gonna stop at the arc, left side. Back out to Braxton, he'll dribble down toward the corner, get it back out top, and they'll hold it up in the half court set. Lob it down low, swing it around to Ibarra, almost picked from behind by Franklin and they say it went out of bounds off of Josh. Fans on the baseline are not happy about that. But it'll be a turnover and the Huskies will drop back on defense. Russell goes to the bench, he'll get a breather. Fountain is checked in, Cantwell has checked in. Lasher's gonna sit down for a few minutes as well. Farquhar's got to look at a three from the left angle. He's got his third three of the first half. He's got nine points here. Uh, check it, 11 points here in the first half. Here's a shot put up and partially blocked, I believe, by Abilene Christian. Chukwajekwu with the miss, and the Wildcats head back the other way. Franklin holds it up. Gives it off, back underneath, get it to Lewis. Lewis puts it up, spins it around the iron and it drops down through. B.J. Maxwell has checked into the ball game. And we've got a timeout on the floor. The Huskies are down by eight early on here, 21-13 with 11.45 to go. And we will take the break here on the Husky Sports Network. doesn't get your toes tapping, check your pulse. You may be dead. Here it is, coming to you in living cola. Refreshing Pepsi Cola. From the wonderful folks who put the R in cola. I'll be signing off now, because it's my bedtime. I'll catch you on the flip side. Be there. The good news is America is coming back. More jobs, more building, more of what makes our country great. And more and more cities and towns, more small businesses and big corporations are choosing the highly skilled, highly trained members of the IBEW to do the work. The International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers is committed to doing the job right, on time, safely. America is making a big comeback, and the IBEW is proud to do our part. Garrett Sharp, 21-13, Abilene Christian with the early lead. They are still warming it up from the floor, 9-14, of 14, and Darren Lewis to the free throw line out of the timeout for a plus one opportunity. 
that he gets to go. And he's now got nine points. Hayden Farquhar has 11 to lead the way for them. But they are up now by nine, 22-13. Fountain out top with the dribble, kicks it out top. Ace Cantwell lob it down low to Josh Ibarra. Josh finally gets one to stay in the hole, and it drops down through. First points of the ball game for Ibarra. And the Huskies are back to within seven, 22-15. Franklin dribbles out top, looks back at the bench. Joe Golding screaming the instructions at his team. They lob it around the arc. Maxwell. Franklin skip it left side to Green. Get it down low to Farquhar. His shot won't go. And Chukwujekwu fights off everyone for the rebound. Off to Bonds. Bonds to the rack. And he lays it up and in for two. Cuts it down to five. Bonds with nine now. And the Huskies down 22-17 as we head to the 10 and a half minute mark. Fans again calling for defense. The Huskies like in a little matchup zone. In the corner, they cover up on Farquhar. He dribbles by Fountain, tries to pass it to Green. Feed it down low. Farquhar left alone on the baseline. Franklin got to Karam and saw Farquhar underneath. And Huskies had taken their eye off of him, and he slipped through and got the layup right under the basket. 24-17, 10 minutes to go in the first half. Chukujeku dribbles in. Kick it back out to Fountain. Fountain spin around. Free throw line finds Cantwell. Down to nine on the shot clock. Asa on the dribble. Screen for Ibarra. Kick it to Chukujeku. He's going to put up a three and Reveal gets the tray to go. Well, Reveal doesn't fire up a lot of long distance dial ups, but Feeling it there, and he got it to go, and it's back down to four. Reveal now has his first point to the ball game. 9-28 and counting here in the first half. 24-20. Here's a jumper put up by Green. Baseline three won't go, and Reveal Chugujeko with another board. He'll bring it back up himself. Cross the timeline, sets up left side angle. Looks for help, finds Bonds who pops out high. Six boards now for Chukwujeku in this game. Go to Ibarra on the baseline. He's bumped by Farquhar. That'll be his first personal. Just the second team foul, on, or check it, third team foul on Abilene Christian. They will send substitutions into the game. Green will sit down. Lewis is gonna get a breather. Farquhar will come out as well. Into the ball game, Trey Lennox for the first time, a 6'3 freshman. Joined by Maxwell and Tripp who come out there. Here's a feed inside to Ibarra. Can't finish it off at the rim. Hayden Howell has checked in for Abilene Christian as well, and the Wildcats bring it back up the floor. Leading by four as they come. Tripp inside to Maxwell, finds Howell on the baseline, loses control, knocked out of bounds by the Huskies, though. 8.42 left in the first half of play. Dave Cusick, one of the officials on the baseline, gets the ball in to the Wildcats, and they get it out top into the hands of Franklin. 8.33 and counting in the first half. Maxwell drives in, right side, floats it up with the right hand. Found the lane to the rack, and he just went high off the window and down through. And it's back up to a six-point lead. Huskies clamped down a little bit at times here in the first half and closed in, but unable to get over the hump yet here in the first half. Bonds out top. Goes to Cantwell. Lob it in to the post. Ibarra back out to Cantwell. Going to fire up a three. Asa airballs it. Saved by Fountain underneath to Chukujeku. Puts it up. Won't go. Missed the iron. And the rebound cleared by Howell for the Wildcats. Well, the Huskies may be a little bit amped up here with some extra adrenaline for senior night tonight, so may need to settle down just a little bit. Trailing by six. Maxwell's got an elbow jumper from the free throw line, and 
It'll be knocked out of bounds by the Wildcats, and that'll stop the clock with 7.36 to go. Well, we've got a timeout on the floor. Huskies still down in this game. 26 to 20 is our score. We'll take a break and come back on the Husky Sports Network. The real story is I'm in here every morning and uh, have sampled just about every kolache that they make here. Bacon, egg, and cheese on wheat for me, and then the rest is for the office. So, yes, I'll pick up every Friday. I'll stop by here and pick up some for my group. Well, I used to think it was just fruit-filled stuff, and then I came here, and there's eggs and bacon and cheese and all kinds of good stuff in there. It's like a whole breakfast and a bun. It's great. <laughs> it's always a good thing if you can eat healthy and not know it. <laughs> you drive down the street looking for something to eat, you're going to pass five places to buy a sandwich, six places to buy a burger. There's only one place you can get a kolache, and that's Kolache Factory. It's delicious. You're going to have people that try to copy you, but they're not going to do it as well. We know what we're doing. We've been doing it for 25 years. We do it the best, and our success proves that. Houston's own Kolache Factory, the freshest, highest quality, best-tasting kolaches in town. Over 50 Houston area locations and a proud partner of HBU Athletics. <music> Back here, Sharp Jim, 7.36 to go here in the first half of play. The Huskies down by six, 26-20, but they've got the basketball as they come up the floor. T. Russell is checked back in along with Coulter Lasher. Teef gets it to Fountain and gets it right back. Left side angle, looking for help. Bounce past the Fountain, left baseline. Alex is going to put up a jumper, comes up short off the front iron, and the rebound is pulled down by Drake Green for Abilene Christian. Get it to Jalen Franklin across the timeline, skips it cross court to trip, left side. Swing it to Lewis, back to Franklin. Trip into the corner, goes to Green. Try to go cross court, pass is tipped, but it winds up with Franklin anyway. Back to trip, down to four on the shot clock, down low, Lewis gets it up, goes, and count the bucket. And Jaron Lewis now with 11 points here in the first half has another plus one opportunity. Looking for his second three point play the old fashioned way here in the first half. And trying to extend their lead out to nine and he does with 6.51 to go. 29-20 as the Huskies bring it up. Bonds faces a little token pressure as he gets into the forecourt. Left side angle. Goes to a tee for Russell. Russell brings it to the middle. Kick it back. Left side on the baseline to Cantwell. Sling it out to Lasher. He's going to drive him. Float it up. Shot won't go. And nobody there for the board in the white jersey. Green clears it and he gets it off to Franklin. And they bring it back the other way. Franklin back to Green, right side angle, back out top. Green just a couple of steps inside the midcourt line. Looks up, now kicks it left side to trip. Beat it down to Lewis in the blocks. Inside to Howell, and he traveled on the baseline. Walked with the ball as he tried to go up. Stops the clock with 6.01 to go. 29-20, still the score. Cantwell's going to check out. And revealed Chukujekwu back in for the Huskies. Rhythm just a little off here tonight in the first half of this one. The Huskies bring it up to four, trailing by nine. Chukujekwu looking inside, feeds Fountain on the baseline. He gets it to a Atif Russell, and we got a whistle. As Atif went in, shot was blocked from behind. I think that was Green that got a hand on it. But they call him for the foul. First foul on... Green, and it's the fourth foul on Abilene Christian, but a shooting foul, so it sends a Tief Russell to the free throw line to shoot a pair here. Tief has struggled from time to time at the line this season, averaging just under eight points a game and a 58% free throw shooter in this one. 
Misses the front end here, one more to come. 5.47 to go in the first half of play. Stick with a special guest coming up at halftime tonight, the Vice President of Advancement here at the, the University, Charles Bacaris, going to join us. Franklin will bring it up as Russell got the second free throw to go, one out of two. Franklin, yo-yos on top, swing it left side to trip, trip to Lewis, back to Franklin. And Bonds looks him in the eye. Back to Farquhar, left side angle. This three is going to hit up and stick in between the top of the scoreboard and uh, the shot clock. And Braxton Bonds will get rid of it. Took care of it. Scotland Cottrell. One of the managers for the team got him an extra basketball and he tossed it up there and knocked it off. 29-21 as the Huskies bring it back up the floor. Need some points on the board, need to play a little defense. Here's a give and go to Fountain on the baseline, puts up the floater and now finds the range from the right side. Cuts it down to six, 29-23. Fountain's first points of the ball game. And the Huskies back to within six. Franklin sets up left angle. Gets it to Farquhar. Farquhar to Green on the baseline, right side. Give it to Lewis. Fountain on him. Hand up in his face. Puts up a jumper. Short. Air ball pulled down by Chukujekwu. Off to Lasher. Lasher sets up right angle. Going to kick it cross court into the corner to Russell. Russell drives in and he's called for a travel. He was bumped around. No call for the contact there. Coach Cottrell up off the bench talking to Pat Bay. I think he thought the same thing I did that might have been some bumping that initiated that travel by Russell. No call. Here's Franklin back the other way, floats it up from the right elbow and bounced around the iron and drops down through. It's back up to an eight point advantage, 31 23. Lasher gives it off. Chukwu Jekwu feed it to Fountain, a jumper spins out. Rattled around the arm, but would not stay down. And the Wildcats clear the glass. Husky shooting down around 40%. Meanwhile, Abilene Christian is up over 56. Franklin goes to green, left side angle, take it to the middle, leave it for Lewis on the left angle. Dribbles down, backs down, spin around, get it back to green. Did he get the shot off? They say yes, he did, and we've got a whistle on the rebound. Off the iron, Fountain got the basketball, and he was bumped, I think, by Maxwell, B.J. Maxwell with the personal, and it stops the clock with 3.26 to go. So. Timeout on the floor. We will take the break one more time before halftime. And the Huskies down by eight, 31 23 on the Husky Sports Network. I've been waiting for days to come like this better than ever before. We know travel isn't what it used to be. By the time you get where you're going, you've been through it all. So, what if you knew there was a hotel that understands how hard your journey's been and spends all its time making up for it? At Doubletree by Hilton, with more than 325 wonderful destinations around the world, we welcome our guests with a warm chocolate chip cookie. Our cookie serves as a symbol of our commitment to turn every little detail of your stay into a delight. Preparing every comfort with care, making every touch special, and every gesture true. Giving that extra attention to the simple things. Bringing humanity back to business and leisure travel. So you can reconnect, relax, Play, focus, smile. Welcome to Doubletree by Hilton, where the little things mean everything. Abilene Christian is 13 of 24 from the floor, 54%. The Huskies are 9 of 23. 39 percent 
Huskies trail by eight here, but they've got the basketball out of the timeout. A T for Russell left side. Gets it out top to reveal Chukujeku. Back to Russell. He's going to pull up and pop from the left elbow. A little 16 footer, and he got it to go. A T with the bucket. He's got his uh, first field goal of the night. Three points for Russell. Under three minutes to go. It's back to a six point game. Quarquar takes a feed out top from Franklin. They play pitch and catch. Now go left side to BJ Maxwell. He'll swing it back cross court right side to Green. Down in the low blocks, back outside to Franklin. His jumper won't go, and Chukujeku saves the rebound off to Bonds. Bracks up the floor, get it to Lasher. He's left alone for a three. Got it. Dead solid, perfect. Colt with a big jumper. He's got nine now, and the Huskies are back to within three. 31 28, 220 to go here in the first half. And an offensive foul going to be called down low away from the basketball. On Drake Green, turnover gives it back to the Huskies with 2.18 to go. Al checks back in. Farquhar will go to the bench. Another substitution coming in for the Wildcats. That's going to be Peyton Ricks, a 6'2 freshman from Wichita, Kansas. He checks in for the first time tonight. Ricks, a... 6'2", 175-pound freshman from Mays South High School up in Kansas. Russell picks up his dribble, finds Bonds, though, right side angle. Braxton goes right baseline to Fountain, drives in past Howell, tried to jam it down through, lost control. Rebound saved by Chukujeku out to Lasher, a three. This one rolls off the iron, and the rebound is cleared by the Wildcats. 31-28, Huskies down by three. Almost a steal, now it is. Nope, saved by Maxwell, and Maxwell is gonna be tied up by Alex Fountain. It's gonna be Huskies basketball with a minute 40 to go. Bodies got tangled up, and a couple of them hit the deck. Brian Huber, one of the officials in the crew, calling for the mop out on the floor. Do a little housekeeping out there where the bodies hit. Pat Bay, the lead official, Dave Cusick, Ryan Huber round out the three-man crew tonight. In this season, regular season finale, Huskies bring it up the floor, 1.35 to go on the first half clock. Chuku Jaku, right angle, finds Bonds alone underneath, and he lays it up and in. Braxton with the back door wide open, cuts it down to a one-point game with 80 seconds left here in the first half, and Bonds has 11 points to go. Franklin dribbles right side, feeds it to Howell. Howell turn around on the baseline, little floater from the right angle and he gets it to go down through. It's back up to a three point game. 33-30 as Russell dribbles right, or check it left side angle. Swing it around the arc, right side to Lasher. To the baseline he goes, turn around, little fall away jumper, shot won't go, but Fountain gets the board. On the baseline, looks for help, finds Coulter, out top to a tee for Russell. Russell will swing it around the arc and they get it into the hands of Bonds. Back to a tee, a tee. To Al, hold it up, give and go to Bonds. Drive it in, float it up, off balance, shot won't go. Rebound tipped around, and it's going to be saved by Lewis. Huskies in the vicinity, but nobody could get a grip on it. And we come back the other way. 15 seconds to go in the first half. Huskies down by three, and the shot clock is off. Looks like the Wildcats will hold for the final possession here. Maxwell takes it, and an offensive foul called away from the basketball. Jaron Lewis trying to set a screen down on the baseline. Called for a moving pick. Picks up his second foul, and Coach Cottrell wants a 30-second timeout to talk it over here. Well, again, we invite you to stay around at halftime. Coming up on the Huskies halftime report, HBU Vice President for Advancement, Charles Bacarese will join us. Talk about some of the 
things going on here on campus. Excited to chat with him. Quick timeout to set up the offensive strategy here with 6.26 seconds to go. Not a lot of time to go. Ricks checks back in. They're going to apply pressure in the backcourt. Asa Cantwell gets it inbounds to Bonds. Goes back to Cantwell. Cantwell's going to try to get off a three at the buzzer, and they say that Maxwell got a hand on the basketball. With no foul. Coach Cottle's got his hands up in the air. Is it to say what happened there? Pat Bay says nothing but ball, Coach. And we go to the locker room at the half with the Huskies down by three. 33 to 30 is our halftime score. We'll be back with the Huskies halftime show here in just a moment on the Husky Sports Network. Tammy and Tommy, two peas in a pod, as they say. We have all the same friends. We like all the same things. I mean, we practically even have the same name. But there's one thing we could just never agree on. Soda. <sighs> I have been begging him all these years to just try Pepsi, and I knew he would change his tune. Yeah, yeah. So, finally, I had him take the Pepsi taste challenge. And go on, tell him what you told me, Tommy. I'm a Pepsi man. Mmm. Right? Gosh, isn't Pepsi so good? I tell you what, I don't know why I didn't try it sooner. Me neither. It's so crisp and refreshing and bubbly. Like me. Like you. I'm always right. She's always right. <laughs> All across the South, people are choosing the great taste of Pepsi. Take the Pepsi Taste Challenge and let your taste decide. Is it time to buy your first or next car? Let Houston Federal Credit Union help. Their super low rates and easy payment terms can save you a lot of money. Plus, their fast approval will put you behind the wheel of your dream car in no time. Stop by their office near campus at 6808 Bentliff Drive or visit them online at HoustonFCU.org and let them help you get the very best deal on your new or pre-owned car or truck. Experience a better way of banking at Houston Federal Credit Union, the official credit union of HBU. Houston Federal Credit Union is federally insured by NCUA. The body is incredibly powerful. It's so nimble and fluid, but sometimes we push it too far. That's when you need the strength of Memorial Hermann and our body of affiliated orthopedic specialists. With our renowned Ironman Sports Medicine Institute, they not only get your body back to where it was, they get it to go further. It's what makes us more than just hospitals. We are a body of experts. Memorial Hermann, advancing health. International Brotherhood of Electric Workers, local 716 in Houston, get up for work each day because we believe building schools to code matters. Because building Houston's hospitals correctly saves lives. Because training for 10,000 hours makes a difference. That's why we get up, because we want to make a difference. To be the best, hire the best. IBEW, where skill and value lock arms. The time is now to hire IBEW electricians. I'm Robin. And I'm Chris. We're the brothers behind Firehouse Subs. The last thing anyone needed was another sub shop. They needed a better one. We built Firehouse Subs on quality and quantity. And I'm the quality. Why my quantity? Are you kidding? Try our hook and ladder sub. Smoked turkey breast, mm. Virginia honey ham, and Monterey Jack cheese. Yeah, all served steaming hot on a toasted sub roll. Our way beats their way. If you don't agree, it's free. On him. It's on him. Firehouse Subs, founded by firemen. The real story is I'm in here every morning and uh, have sampled just about every kolache that they make here. Bacon, egg, and cheese on wheat for me, and then the rest is for the office. So, yes, I'll pick up every Friday. I'll stop by here and pick up some for my group. So. Well, I used to think it was just fruit-filled stuff, and then I came here, and there's eggs and bacon and cheese and all kinds of good stuff in there. It's like a whole breakfast and a bun. It's great. <laughs> It's always a good thing if you can eat healthy and not know it. <laughs> when you drive down the street looking for something to eat, you're going to pass five places to buy a sandwich, six places to buy a burger. There's only one place you can get a kolache. 
and that's Klotzy Factory. It's delicious. You're going to have people that try to copy you, but they're not going to do it as well. We know what we're doing. We've been doing it for 25 years. We do it the best, and our success proves that. Houston's own Kalachi Factory, the freshest, highest quality, best-tasting kolaches in town. Over 50 Houston area locations and a proud partner of HBU Athletics. I've been waiting for days to come like this better than ever before. We know travel isn't what it used to be. By the time you get where you're going, you've been through it all. So what if you knew there was a hotel that understands how hard your journey's been and spends all its time making up for it? At Doubletree by Hilton, with more than 325 wonderful destinations around the world, we welcome our guests with a warm chocolate chip cookie. Our cookie serves as a symbol of our commitment to turn every little detail of your stay into a delight. Preparing every comfort with care, making every touch special, and every gesture true. Giving that extra attention to the simple things. Bringing humanity back to business and leisure travel. So you can reconnect, relax, play, focus, smile. Welcome to Doubletree by Hilton. Where the little things mean everything. This is the HBU Husky Sports Network. Powered by Legacy Sports. And back here at Sharp Gym, halftime of our game between your HBU Huskies and the Abilene Christian Wildcats. Right now, the Wildcats with a three-point lead here at the halftime break. And we've got a very special guest tonight here in the regular season finale, Charles Bacaris, the vice president for Major Gifts. Uh, and Thanks, Lonnie. <laughs> good to have you here, Charles. We were, we were kind of laughing off mic a minute ago about the fact that you don't get to sneak up on anybody with that title. That title really tells everybody what I'm doing and what we're about. <laughs> so you're right. I'm, I'm coming straight at them. <laughs> well, there, there's some good stuff to talk about. You know, we want to chat about the first half here for just a minute, though. The Huskies, I think a little extra adrenaline pumping tonight for senior night. A lot of festivities before the game and a good crowd on hand here tonight. It is. But uh, there was a lot of excitement in this one and we're hoping that maybe they'll get things back to normal and back in gear here in the second half. I think the play has been very physical tonight. I think that it seems like the uh, refs are letting them play. They're not calling a lot of stuff, and so uh, our guys need to relax, play their game, get in their offense, and I think we're going to be in good shape. Yeah, let's hope so. Let's talk about also some exciting news that you guys unveiled back in November of this year, a, a new capital campaign that Abs you've got underway. Absolutely, yes. Robert Sloan uh, at our gala in November announced that we are in a five-year, $136 million capital campaign, which is comprehensive in nature. And thank thankfully, we're halfway there. Uh, as my colleague says, uh, we've raised $72 million, and my colleague says we've done the easy half. <laughs> so we've got a lot more to do. But... Uh, Really, the, the big beneficiaries will be our students, our faculty, and uh, the campus itself uh, in, in the facilities that we, that we want to put on the ground after raising the support. Some of those facilities might uh, involve athletic departments here, too. You know, we've been in Sharp Gym for years, and it's been a great, cozy environment, but uh, there's been some talk about a, a new arena for the basketball teams. Absolutely. That is in the design plan. Uh, it's a brand-new arena out on the freeway with a lot of visibility. And, uh, you know, as our athletic teams continue to have success on the field and on the court, that brings even more visibility and excitement to HBU. So we, we believe that that new arena will just be a further leverage point for us uh, when and if we can get that started. And it's, it's kind of neat, too, to have uh, some success on the court that kind of generates a little excitement off the court as well for you. Absolutely. There's a lot of former players and alums <laughs> that are over here in the end zone tonight, and it's great to see them back. I think we're going to head into the tournament with great momentum, and uh, that, that really does spur a lot of our work and advancement as we ask our alums to give to the university. That's really important. And, and I would imagine from your perspective, as, as great as the major gifts are, a lot of what the university can do as far as these capital campaigns is really tied into what the rank and file alumni and friends of the university can do to contribute. That's right. We need everybody in this campaign. Uh, and, and no gift is too small. And I say that with all honesty. 
Uh, every gift that comes in, it, it, you know, it has an impact, whether it's for student scholarships or faculty endowment or uh, certainly programmatic needs that we have. There's so much going on. The nursing school, uh, the university was just admitted to the Texas Medical Center as a mm -hmm. member you know, institution, yeah. which is a big plus for us. Uh, we've launched the McNair Center for Entrepreneurship and for Enterprise, and there's so much more happening on the academic side. Uh, exciting. I, I, I think uh, sometimes it's easy to forget, you know, we get caught up in, in the athletic part when we're around the athletic, guys like me that are around the athletic department a lot. It, there's an awful lot not involving athletics that are going here that are making this a very neat destination for students and for people who are looking to support a good cause. That's true. This, this next year, the Dunham College Business will celebrate the 50th anniversary of our MBA program. Wow. So we want to pause and acknowledge that moment as well. And this May, we will celebrate the 50th anniversary of our first graduating class at HBU. <laughs> so there is a lot going on, and uh, it's really a great moment in the history of the university. If people want to get involved, how can they get involved how what can they do how can they get in contact with you or with someone on your staff you bet the best thing to do is to go to our website at hbu.edu and there is prominently displayed at the top a give to hbu button you can click on that and that opens up the page which then could lead someone to uh, a member of our staff contact me or tommy bambrick the vice president of the capital campaign uh, we're all there and we're looking forward to connecting with our friends alums and, and others well, those of us who spend a lot of time around here have grown to love this place, and so I think it's a worthwhile endeavor for anybody to get involved in. We appreciate you spending a couple of minutes to chat about it with us. Well, thanks very much, and I can just say go Huskies in the second half. There you go. Let's right? get some points. Good. Thank you, Lonnie. Charles Bagarese, we will take a timeout and come back with more on the Huskies Halftime Report after this. Are you a graduate of Houston Baptist University? Did you know the value of your degree increases when you actively participate in the HBU Alumni Association? Your Alumni Association actively supports the growth, retention, and ranking of our school by our scholarship efforts. Husky Alumni Network volunteers actively work to recruit the best and brightest to HBU, and we promote and support programs intended to build a growing network of people committed to quality, higher Christian education through our alumni scholarship efforts. We also work to strengthen the bond between our university and the community, and we're your connection to over 18,000 fellow alumni, mostly in and around the Houston metro area. Log on to learn more about our mission and your privileges and benefits at hbu.edu slash alumni. And find us via social media on Facebook at the Houston Baptist University Alumni Association page and on Twitter and Instagram at hbu underscore alumni. But no matter how you do it, connect with the HBU Alumni Association because a strong alumni base equals a strong HBU. At Houston Federal Credit Union, we're dedicated to our members, our communities, and now the students, faculty, and employees of Houston Baptist University. From checking and savings accounts to loans, IRAs, money markets, and other financial tools, HFCU is ready to serve the HBU Huskies and their fans. Learn more today. Call 866-OUR-HFCU or log on to HoustonFCU.org. Houston Federal Credit Union and the HBU Huskies, that's a doggone good team. Houston Federal Credit Union is federally insured by NCUA. A firefighter's duty. Fighting fires, rescuing citizens, performing copious kettlebell exercises demands a daring degree of readiness. A degree of readiness achieved eating fulfillingly flavorful firehouse subs. With premium carved meats and cheeses steamed to tasty magnificence then piled onto toasted rolls. Is your footwear connected to your pants? No, it's not. Because you're not a firefighter but you can be ready like one. Firehouse Subs, the hero of all subs. But what about you? When you text that really cute guy you met at a party on Friday, and he immediately texts you back, you celebrate with an ice-cold Pepsi. Sounds good, doesn't it? But why stop there? The refreshing taste of Pepsi is the perfect way to celebrate anything, like when you and your roommate order a pizza and the delivery guy throws an extra breadsticks no charge. That's worth a Pepsi celebration. Break out the Pepsi. Ten years of intensity. Ten years of dunks. Ten years of three-pointers. Ten years of drives. Ten years of teamwork. Ten years of leadership. Ten years of hustle. Ten years of champions. A decade in Katie. The 2017 Southland Basketball Tournament. 
March 8th through the 12th at the Merrill Center. Go to Ticketmaster.com or Southland School Ticket Offices. This is the HBU Husky Sports Network, powered by Legacy Sports. Back here at Sharp Gym, Lonnie King along with you, just about set to go with second half action. Quick recap of the first half stats here. The Huskies led by Braxton Bonds, who has 11 points, nine from Coulter Lasher, three apiece from Matif Russell and Reveal Chukujeku, and then two from Alex Fountain, two from Josh Ibarra. Coach Cottrell went with uh, five seniors to start tonight, and... Uh, those guys got out of the gate fairly well, but struggled a little bit. The Huskies have not led. Well, they led for 21 seconds of uh, the first half uh, on a three by Coulter Lasher. Took a 3-2 lead at the 17:59 mark, but have not led uh, any other time and any more since that point. And so they trail here by three as we get set to go. Shot 40%, 12 of 30 in the first half, 14 for 26 from the floor for Abilene Christian, 53.8%. Huskies were hotter from the three-point line, five of seven, 71%, one of two at the free throw line, 50%. Abilene Christian, um, uh, I was about to say out-rebounding the Huskies, but the Huskies actually have an overall rebounding edge, 16-14 and uh, edge on the offensive boards, 6-2. But they haven't turned it into a big advantage, second chance points. Uh, But um, Abilene Christian with an edge of 12-10 on the defensive boards. Ready to go here. Second half about to get underway. We appreciate Charles Baccarese, the vice president of Major Gifts, checking in with us at halftime. And the second half is underway. Abilene Christian with the basketball. Kick it in the corner to Drake Green. And Green fires up a two inside the arc from the right side. Huskies send their normal starters out to start the second half. Now Asa Cantwell and Josh Ibarra, along with Braxton Bonds, join the two seniors, Lasher and Chukujeku, out on the floor. And Ibarra underneath. Goes high off the window and down through. There was some contact underneath. The Huskies thinking there should have been some fouls, but looks like the officials are going to let them play tonight, so you need to get used to that. Adjust your game to the contact. Out top, Franklin's got it. Holds it up after one dribble. Kicks it back cross court to Green. Fires up a three off the mark. And Bonds with the rebound. Off on the run, three on three. Kick it over to Chukujeku, spin around. Underneath, finds Ibarra to the rack. Got it, and he's fouled. Cuts it down to one and a chance to tie with the and one to come at the line. 18.52 to go in regulation time. Ibarra to the free throw line for the first time tonight. Josh gets a little friendly help from the rim and the window, and it goes down through, and we're all tied up at 35. First tie of the ball game. Franklin brings it up. Screen from Farquhar, kick it cross court. Trip with the jumper, shot won't go. Rebounds tipped out of bounds by Maxwell, who came up over the back of... Asa Cantwell to knock it out of bounds and the Huskies will take possession. Tied up and an opportunity to take just their second lead of the night. 35-35, 18 and a half minutes left in the game. Flasher out top, takes the feed from Cantwell. Dribbles, tries to feed it down low to Ibarra, but Josh couldn't get to it, led him too far with the bounce pass and it goes out of bounds on the baseline. Wildcats basketball, and they'll get it up. Lewis is picked up by Lasher as he comes across the midcourt stripe. Now they switch, and Bonds gets him, swats at the basketball, but Lewis stays with it in the paint and floats it up with the right hand and gives them the lead back, 37-35. Chukujeku feeds it to Bonds inside. 
Almost stolen away, knocked out of bounds by Abilene Christian, though. Again, guys hitting the deck. Franklin, Farquhar, and the purple jerseys both on the ground. Bonds was down there as well. They're all up and appear to be okay. Huskies basketball, 17.57 to go. Had some bodies on the hardwood tonight. A lot of hustle on both sides of the ball. Ryan Huber still looking for a little housekeeping to be done as they get the wet spot. Now we're ready to go. And Asa Cantwell gets the basketball and lob it out top, left side to Braxton Bonds. Dribble left to right, across the top of the arc. Kick it to the middle. Reveal to Kujeku. Lob it down low for Ibarra. Bounce pass. Cantwell, little tap to Lasher. And Colts giving the Huskies the lead again with a three. Coulter with a big time bucket. And the Huskies are up for the first time here in the second half and for the first time since they led 3 2 in this ball game. Whistle away from the basketball. We've got a foul down low. Going to be called on Lasher. Colts' first personal foul. It'll be interesting to see if they tighten up things with the whistles here in the second half. They were letting a lot of contact go in the first half. Franklin out top. Kicks it right angle, gets it back. Now to Lewis into the paint, kick it down on the baseline, left side to Maxwell, and he fires up a baseline three. And takes him back up to a two-point advantage, 40-38. 17 minutes and counting. Lob it inside, Ibarra, swing it out. Cantwell open for a three, rims it out. Nobody home for the board either. And the Huskies will have to drop back on defense. That one spun around, wouldn't go. Here's Lewis, goes high off the window. Off the iron and comes out, and Lasher back the other way. In a hurry, on the floor. Kick it to Chukwujeku, float it up and drain it. Coulter with the assist, reveal with the bucket. He's got five. The Lasher picked off his first rebound. And we're all tied up at 40, 16.25 to go in the game. Franklin, Farquhar, a three. Off the iron this time. Farquhar was deadly in the first half, and this one's going to go out of bounds. Hit the leg of B.J. Maxwell for Abilene Christian. And so the Huskies will bring it up the floor with an opportunity to take the lead back. Farquhar checks out. Hayden Howell checks in for the Wildcats. And Bonds brings it up for the Huskies. Huskies moving right to left here in the second half. Kick it left side to Chukujeku, and we've got a whistle of violation called on revealed Chukujeku. I think he went out of bounds and then reestablished position. You can't be the first person to touch the basketball after that, I think is what Ryan Huber was calling there. So a turnover gives it back to Abilene Christian. First turnover on reveal. Cross court, kick it for a three from the baseline for Maxwell. Won't go. Ibarra with the rebound for the Huskies. Chukujeku up the floor, spin around in the paint, float it up, count it, and he's fouled. And reveal will go to the line for a plus one opportunity. Stops the clock with 15.36 to go. Timeout on the floor. The Huskies. With a two-point lead, 42 to 40, after trailing at halftime by as many as nine points in the first half. Huskies up on the Husky Sports Network. Passionate, delivering expert neurological care for adults and children. We're dedicated, responding to neurotrauma and stroke with LifeLight in our level one trauma center. We're persistent, restoring lives at our tier rehabilitation and research hospital. We are Memorial Hermann. And we're making neuroscience breakthroughs every day.
International Brotherhood of Electric Workers, Local 716 in Houston, get up for work each day because we believe building schools to code matters. Because building Houston's hospitals correctly saves lives. Because training for 10,000 hours makes a difference. That's why we get up, because we want to make a difference. To be the best, hire the best. IBEW, where skill and value lock arms. The time is now to hire IBEW electricians. Forty-two forty is our score as we come out of the timeout. The Huskies about scored Abilene Christian. 12-7 to start the second half of action here and reveal Chukwujeku adds a three free throw. And he's got eight points now and the Huskies up by three, first three point lead of the game for HBU. Trip feeds it to Howell, Howell underneath to Lewis and Lewis snuck inside and got the layup off the glass and down through and it's back to a one point game. 43-42, Huskies lob it down low to Ibarra, and Josh just towers over anybody else out there on the floor, so he takes the feed and just goes off the window and down through. And the Huskies back up by three, 45-42. Franklin up the floor, dribbles to the left angle, finds Lewis, Lewis picked up by Lasher. Drives into the paint, kick it on the baseline to Howell. A high arching rainbow jumper. And it bounced around the irons, but drops down through. It's back to a one point game. 45 44, 14 35 to go. Chuka J. Clue to Bonds. Bonds kicks it to Lasher into the corner. Cantwell for a three, short off the iron. Ibarra there to pick it and put it back in. Josh now with. 11 points here in the ball game. After being held relatively quiet in the first half. To the rack, though. Jalen Franklin back the other way. Lays it in, found the lane on the left side of the paint. Took it straight up and in. Cuts it back down to one. This is gonna be a seesaw battle, it feels like, the rest of the way in. Lasser's going to try to put up a three, maybe partially tipped, and it comes up an air ball. Franklin the other way, into the corner to Lewis. Lewis dribbles to the middle, stops at the free throw circle, now takes it in and call for an offensive foul. Hesitated, then lowered the shoulder as he tried to penetrate. Bumps Lasher, turn it over back to the Huskies. It goes, that's three fouls now on Jaron Lewis. Steve Russell's going to check in for HBU. Let's see. Lewis goes to the bench with his 3,000. Trey Lennox checks in for him. So Cantwell out for the Huskies. Lewis out for the Wildcats. Lennox in for ACU and Atif Russell in for HBU. Bonds dribbles. Bounce pass to Lasher. Feed it in the corner to Russell. Back to Lasher. Back to Russell. Baseline three. And he got it. Nice cold jumper from a team. He's done that quite often here in this eight game stretch. Become a bigger offensive contributor for the Huskies. Franklin out to Maxwell, a three with the answer. BJ Maxwell left alone and they again love to fire up those threes and they can do it. And the Huskies come back the other way and we've got a whistle and a foul. Foul is gonna be called on Lennox. That's the first on Lennox. It'll be Huskies basketball on the baseline. Four fouls now on Abilene here in the second half. Huskies trying to get it inbounds. Russell finds Ibarra back to Chukwujeku on the baseline. Bumped with bodies, won't go, but he follows his miss. Can't get it to go a second time. This time it's cleared by the Wildcats. Fans wanted a foul, no whistle there. They're letting some contact go. And back the other way, the Huskies picked the pocket of the Wildcats. Russell left alone for a three, and he gets it to go. A back up by four. The Huskies 
Now with a 53-49 advantage, nine points off the bench for Atif tonight. Check it. He's one of the seniors. He started. Forgive me, Atif. Nine points for the senior from Seven Lakes. Franklin finds a backdoor feed. It's Hayden Howe. He got it underneath Ibarra. Used the rim as a shield and laid it up and in. 4-2, 53-51 as we roll under the 12 minute mark to go in this game. Bonds will find Lasher. Lasher in the paint, goes to Ibarra, couldn't get a good grip on it and the shot goes awry and the rebound cleared by the Wildcats. Franklin will bring it up. Breathing hard as he does, going to slow the pace down a little bit. 15 on the shot clock. Take it to the middle. Big screen from Howell to the baseline. Feed Maxwell blocked by Barra, and they're going to call a foul. Who's it going to be charged to? They're going to call it on Maxwell for an offensive foul, so the Huskies will have the basketball with 11.28 to go. But right now, we've got a timeout on the floor. Huskies up by two, 53-51 on the Husky Sports Network. You just hit the flavor mother load. Guaranteed delicious. Firehouse subs are packed beyond belief with steaming hot premium meats and cheeses. Starting at only $5.49, it's gourmet subs without the gourmet prices. Just look at our club on a sub. And by look, he means try. Smoked turkey breast, Virginia honey ham, melty Monterey Jack, and bacon eat bacon. Firehouse subs. Starting at only $5.49. One bite, one taste, you're hooked. At Houston Federal Credit Union, we're dedicated to our members, our communities, and now the students, faculty, and employees of Houston Baptist University. From checking and savings accounts to loans, IRAs, money markets, and other financial tools, HFCU is ready to serve the HBU Huskies and their fans. Learn more today. Call 866-OUR-HFCU or log on to HoustonFCU.org. Houston Federal Credit Union and the HBU Huskies, that's a doggone good team. Houston Federal Credit Union is federally insured by NCUA. Here at Sharp Jim, Lonnie King along with you. Huskies out of the timeout, trying to feed it into Ibarra. He lost it and back the other way in a hurry. The Wildcats will send Franklin to the rack. He can't get it to go, but he's going to be fouled and will go to the free throw line. Fouls on a T for Russell with 11-16 to go. 53-51. Huskies by two, but Franklin with an opportunity to tie this game up. Jalen Franklin's first trip to the line tonight, and he gets it to go. One more to come. This is the only Southland Conference men's game that's not complete yet. A&M Corpus Christi won over Incarnate Word, 81-64. New Orleans will be the number one seed going into the tournament. They knocked off. Nichols tonight, 74-64. Franklin's free throws are both good. He ties us up at 53. SFA has just defeated Sam Houston State. And so the three teams ahead of the Huskies in the standings have won. But the Huskies need a win to have a three-way tie with Texas A&M, Corpus Christi, and SFA. Russell drives in right side, back out to Jalen Gates, who's checked in, goes up for a three, and he's fouled. And little Gates will go to the line for three free throws here. Saw Will Gates Sr. in the house earlier, looking across the way to see if we can see him now. I know he's here. I don't focus in on him right at the moment there. I see him across the way and his son is at the free throw line and gets the first one to go. Huskies back up by one. Two more free throws to come for the freshman from 
Shirts Clemens High School over in the San Antonio area. Second one is good. Peyton Ricks checks in along with Hayden Farquhar for the Wildcats. Howell and let's see who else? Green, Drake Green check out. Green, Archie <laughs> Gates is. Third free throw is good. Three of three at the line for Jalen. And he gives the Huskies a three-point lead again. Franklin feeds it to Maxwell into the corner. Farquhar left alone for a three. That big guy can shoot from long distance, and he's got 16 points now. And 12 of them, I believe, are on three-point field goals. Farquhar, four of seven from the three-point line tonight now. Bonds leave it out for Gates. Gates for a three. Jalen will fire it up. He's got six now. And the Huskies back up by three, 59-56. Ricks out top to Franklin. Franklin to Maxwell. Maxwell to Lewis, Lewis to Farquhar. Tried to go with a bounce pass inside, kicked by, scoreboard is messed up here in the arena. They've got the visitors with the three point lead. It's actually the Huskies up by three. So the fans here are screaming at the scoreboard operators. Now they've taken it off. And the fans rejoice. 59-56 Huskies. ACU basketball. Ricks dribbles out to the top. Kicks it right side to Franklin. Back to Ricks. Drives in and the shot clock runs out. That's a violation on the Huskies. Joe Golding is upset at his freshman for perhaps losing track of the clock there, and the Huskies will take over after the turnover. 59-56, a three-point lead for the good guys right now. Gates to Fountain, lob it down low to Ibarra. One dribble, put it up, it goes! Hung on the iron, but drops down through, and he's got a plus one opportunity. 9.23 to go. We've got a timeout on the floor called by the Wildcats of Abilene Christian. This won't be a media timeout. 30-second timeout that they're going to turn into a full. And it stops the clock with 9.23. All right, so let's recap what happened in the conference today. SFA, a winner over Sam Houston State, 64-56. New Orleans, a winner over Nichols, 74-64. Lamar, by the way, a winner on the road in Lake Charles, 90-83 over McNeese State. Northwestern State, a big win over Central Arkansas. They needed that, but it still may not be enough for the Demons to get into the tournament. A&M Corpus Christi with a win at home, 81-64 over Incarnate Word. Huskies right now with a five-point lead here, 61-56 in the only game that is not yet finalized here. New Orleans, 13-5 now, the number one seed going into the tournament next week. A&M Corpus Christi, 12-6, SFA, 12-6. And, and right now the Huskies are 11-6, looking to go to 12 and six and create a three-way tie. Sam Houston will be the five seed, Lamar. Well, those Lamar and Sam Houston are both 10 and eight. We'll have to see who's got the tiebreaker there, but free throw is missed by Ibarra out of the timeout and the Wildcats clear the rebound. Farquhar out top goes right side to Maxwell. Maxwell back to Farquhar gets it to Franklin. Franklin's going to dribble, pull up at the elbow, float it up, and got it to go. Nice touch, little rotation 
Backspin on that jumper, and he floats it down through the cords. And it's back to a three-point game, 61-58 Huskies. Bonds and Fountain play catch, get it over to Russell. A little jumper from the right corner, and he got it to go. Atif Russell up into double digits now with 11, and the Huskies back up by five, 63-58. Franklin dribbles to the right angle, double teamed, kicks it cross court to Maxwell to the baseline. Back left elbow to Lewis. He's picked up by Fountain. Ibarra shading that way as well. Dribbles in, kick it back out. Farquhar for a three. And this one is going to bounce off the iron. Huskies get a break there. And Russell comes out of the pack with the basketball. To the rack, floated up, and he's going to be called for an offensive foul. Coach Codgel is animated in his disagreement with that call by Ryan Huber. Abilene Christian quickly back across the timeline. Franklin, leave it for trip, back to Franklin in the corner, gonna drive in past Gates, float it up, shot won't go, and Gates with the board for the Huskies. Off to Bonds in a hurry up the floor, they'll stop at the arc as Bonds will set it up. Right side angle. Dribbles out way beyond the arc. Chugu J. Cruz about to check back in. Swing it to Russell. The gates down low to Ibarra. Kick it back cross court to a teep. Drive in. Pass his defender and up and in for two. A teep Russell with 13 now. And he's feeling it and starting to take over this game with 7.20 to go. It's 65 58 Huskies. Farquhar right side to trip. Lob it down low for Lewis. Picked up there, double team, but it's going to penetrate and the whistle going to be called on Alex Fountain. Fountain will be called for the personal. It'll stop the clock with 7.09 to go. Brings us to a timeout on the floor. Huskies down by three at the break, up by seven now. And we've got a timeout. 65-58 on the Husky Sports Network. Coming to you in Living Cola. The joy of cola. Pepsi Cola from the wonderful folks who put the R in Cola. are shooting 68% here in the second half, 13 of 19 since halftime, and they've gone from three down to seven up, outscoring Abilene Christian by 10 here in the second half. Franklin with the basketball for the Wildcats. Gets it to Maxwell, swing it around, beat it to Farquhar in the paint. He puts up a little mid-range jumper from about 10. Won't go. That might be too close in for him to make a shot like that. And the Huskies go back the other way, leading by seven. Six and a half minutes to go in the game. Bonds gets a screen from Ibarra, kick it back to Lasher, finds Chukwajeku on the baseline. He wanted to give it to Ibarra in the middle, but Maxwell steals it. Off to Lewis, back to Farquhar. Baseball pass into the right corner, a three from Maxwell, and he rattles it down through. Maxwell with 11 now. They've got four guys out on the floor in double figures. And it's back to a four-point game, 65-61. Atif Russell's going to try to answer, and he does. 
Atif Russell with another tray. Atif now three for three from three-point land. He's got 16, and that leads the Huskies in scoring. Atif with a big game here in his final home game at Sharp. Here's Maxwell, kick it back to Franklin. Bounce pass down low to Farquhar. Lost control of it, it goes out of bounds off of Abilene Christian. And the Huskies will come back the other way. Farquhar is gonna check out, Hayden Howell will check in. Bonds and Chukujeku in the backcourt gonna bring it up. Bonds will dribble it across, get it to Lasher, left side angle. Gets a screen from Ibarra, goes past. Pulls up, middle of the arc. Kick it right side, Chukwudegu back cross court to Bonds. Bring it back out to Lasher, top of the arc three. Won't go, the rebound is gonna be whistled dead as we've got a foul underneath and the foul's gonna be called on B.J. Maxwell. That'll be his fourth foul. He's got four. Drake Green's got four. And it will send Revealed Chukwujeku to the free throw line for a one and one. Free throw will not go, though. Rims out. And the Wildcats will clear it. Huskies still lead by seven, 68-61. Five minutes to go in this game. Howell into the paint. Big step, kick it back out to Lewis for a three. Won't go, rebound tipped by Bonds, controlled by Ibarra. Josh with the board, he'll give it back to Braxton. Five rebounds now for Ibarra. Chukujeku, right side to Atif Russell. Maxwell on him, tried to take it in. Almost lost it, but saves it out top to Bonds. Down to seven on the shot clock. Into the hands of Lasher. Spin around, float up a jumper. Rims it out, but Russell's gonna run down the miss. And the Huskies have a new shot clock with 4.20 to go. 68-61. Lasher to Russell. Russell left side to Bonds. Lob it down to Bar Ibarra. Get it right back to Bonds. Dribble to the baseline. Give it to Coulter, a baseline three. Pretty. Nothing but beauty. Three minutes and 50 seconds to go. Hang in there, folks. The Huskies in for a big finish, trying to run the win streak tonight as they head into the conference tournament. Here's Lewis. He flies in, and we got a whistle. He got the shot to go off the window and down through for two. And Joe Golding calls a timeout for Abilene Christian with 3.38 to go. 71-63 is our score. Huskies up by eight with 3.38 to go. Hey, while we've got a minute here, let's hang on to it right here. We'll remind you again uh, that the Huskies are gonna play and they will play next Thursday night. We just Learned that they are the number four seed by virtue of all the other outcomes earlier tonight. So they will play the winner of the 5-8 matchup. And uh, so we will uh, know that later uh, this week who they're going to play. But I also wanted to take a minute, was told a little earlier that a big Huskies fan is uh, not able to be here tonight. She would normally be here for this game tonight, but is recovering from some surgery. Sharon Kolchek, who's a friend of the university and a friend of Miss Jackie Cottrell, the first lady of Huskies basketball. And I know that uh, Sharon would love to be here tonight. And we miss seeing you out here, but uh, are happy that A, you're recovering and hope to see you back out here soon or maybe over at the tournament in Katy next week. But uh, also happy to have you along for the ride tonight since you can't be here. It's a noisy place, that's for sure. Good crowd on hand and right now the Huskies who rebounded from a tough start in this one have an eight point lead 
as they get the ball inbounds and face some pressure into the forecourt. A bar to Chukujeku out top to Bonds. Bonds to Lasher. Lasher, right side angle, holds it up high. Looking for some help. Wants a screen from Ibarra. Gets it. Swing it cross court left to Russell. Left baseline to Chukujeku. Floats it up from the elbow and reveal with a little 10 footer. Raises the arms up high. 10 point lead again. 73 63. Trips going to pull the trigger quickly. Won't go, and Chukujeku clears the glass for the Huskies. Long outlet up to Russell. Three! <laughs> yes, sir! And that may be the final nail. Three minutes to go in a 13-point lead. Huskies, 76. Abilene Christian, 63. There's a shot put up. By Lewis won't go, but Hayden Howe there to tip it up and in. Right place, right time. Cuts the lead down to 11, 76, 65, 227 and counting. Here's Lasher bumped, knocked out of bounds by Tripp. Now there's some discussion between Dave Cusick and Pat Bay. Jaron Lewis was trying to lobby for a call there from Pat Bay, and Dave Cusick said, I've got the call. Now we've got a whistle. Joe Golding screaming at the officials to review that last play where the ball went out of bounds. Right down to our left. Hard to tell. I mean, there was some contact. If you want to get technical about it, there could have been a foul called, and there was not. But the Huskies will have possession. Here's Lasher. Got to fire up a three. This one's going to hit the iron and bounce off. Farquhar cradles the rebound and gets it off to Franklin. Into the corner to Lewis. Fires up a three from the corner, and he gets it to go. They can shoot their way back into this game. We don't want to... Count the chickens too early tonight. Still an eight-point advantage, and we're down to 100 seconds to go. Bonds takes it underneath, though. Gets it out. Russell almost had it stolen away in a triple team, and he's going to be fouled. Foul's going to be called on Jalen Franklin with 141 left. 101 ticks left on the clock in the regular season. And the Huskies with an eight-point lead trying to carry a nine-game winning streak. They would be the hottest team in the Southland Conference going into the tournament next week. Atif Russell to the free throw line. 19 points tonight for Atif. And his shot won't go. Fountain tips a rebound, but they're going to call Alex for... Jumping up over the back of Drake Green to tap that away. It's going to be the foul, uh, the second foul on Alex. And so the Wildcats will send Peyton Ricks back out onto the floor. He checks back in. And Maxwell goes to the bench. Ricks will bring it up. Alongside Lewis. Lewis takes the feed from Ricks and gets it to Franklin. Right side angle. Spin around. Kick it back side to Farquhar. Drive it in. Float it up with the right hand short. He's been deadly from the three-point line, but not as accurate from inside the paint. And the Huskies bring it back up the floor. Eat up a little clock now, but Lash is going to go to the rim and put it in. Coulter off the window. And he'll go to the line for a plus one opportunity. Lasher's got 17 points now. Maxwell's going to check back in. Farquhar will go to the bench. And Lasher can extend the lead back. Above 10, largest lead for the Huskies tonight has been 10. And so this now becomes the largest lead, 79-68. Franklin brings it up into the forecourt. 
Who's going to take it all the way? He tries to float it up over Bonds. Braxton impacted that. The follow by Maxwell and missed. And out of the pack with it is Lasher. Three on two. Colt loses control of the dribble. And now a three on one for the Wildcats. Lewis will lay it up and in. And Joe Golding wants a timeout with 48.8 seconds to go. It's a nine-point lead for the Huskies, 79-70. We're going to hang on to it right here. So New Orleans is going to be the number one seed. A&M Corpus Christi, two. SFA three, HBU the four seed in the tournament next week. Those four teams will sit out the first day of play, five through eight. Sam Houston State, Lamar, Southeastern Louisiana, and I believe, let's see, we're gonna have a one, two, three, four, five way tie at seven wins and 11 losses. Now this is provided everything stays just as it is right here for the next 48.8 seconds. Little caveat on this statement right here, but if the Huskies hold on to win, Abilene Christian joins Nichols, Northwestern State, Central Arkansas. And I just lost my screen here for just a moment five teams at seven and 11. Now Abilene Christian cannot go to the tournament, but they do factor into the tiebreakers. So somebody at the league office may be up late tonight trying to sort out that mess. I thought it was interesting at the top of the standings. Central Arkansas, Incarnate Word, Abilene Christian, Nichols, and Northwestern State are all 7 and 11. Now you got to take Abilene Christian and Incarnate Word out of the mix, but you use those two teams in the tiebreaker solutions first, and then you factor them out. So you probably got some folks in Natchitoches. Thibodeau from Conway, Arkansas that are highly interested in these next 48 seconds. Lasher gets it inbounds to Russell. Russell to Chukujeku and Reveal loses it. It's going to be saved by Franklin. Franklin gets it in the corner to Drake Green, a three, air balled. But Maxwell underneath is going to lay it in. It's a seven-point game with 36.1 to go. Well, the execution by the Huskies was less than optimal on that inbounds play. Still some smiles on the face. And that may be just some uh, smiles of disbelief. Coach Cottrell is unhappy with the gentleman in the striped shirts. Stephen Key, one of the assistants, was smiling. And I think perhaps that could be smiling at something that Coach said. Still a seven-point lead for the Huskies. You'd rather be where HBU is right now than the Wildcats. Up by seven instead of down by seven. But there's still 36.1 ticks on the clock. So as much as we'd like to report, this one's all but done there's still a possession or two to go and the Huskies again are going to face some full court pressure on the basketball inbounds to Fountain Fountain up ahead to Russell Russell almost lost the ball but Bond saves it into the forecourt now get it down low to a teeth and he's going to be fouled double teamed by Maxwell and Ricks and a teeth will go to the free throw line and Tonight, that's a good development for the Huskies. Now, Atif has struggled at the line. But up by seven, he's got 19 right now. Had a career high the other night against AM Corpus Christi with 21 points, and he can equal that right here. 
It's the first free throw to go. He's at 20, and the lead's back up to eight. Farquhar, long range rifle back into the game for the Wildcats. Ricks will sit down, Maxwell will check back in. Russell with one more free throw to come. 25.49 on the clock. Can't tick off fast enough. Second free throw won't go. Lewis with the rebound. Almost stolen away by Bonds, but Franklin brings it up. Shot clock is off. They need two or three possessions here. Kick it around to Drake Green. A three off the mark. Rebound tipped around, controlled by Lewis. He tries to go up, and he's going to be tied up. Huskies tie him up, and they've got the arrow pointing in their direction. And with under eight seconds to go, that'll do it. Well, these guys have caught it an earful from both coaches tonight. Golding's not happy now for Abilene Christian. And a long pass all the way up the floor to Alex Fountain. He's just going to hold it up, and Farquhar will foul him. And that'll send Al to the free throw line. With 5.6 to go, the Huskies are going to come away with their ninth straight win. Carry that into Thursday night in the Southland Conference Tournament. And Katie, hbuhuskies.com slash tickets for your tickets to be there next Thursday night. We want to see all of you out there. But if you can't, for whatever reason, make it to the Merrill Center in Katy. You know where you can hear all your play-by-play -play action of HBU Huskies basketball. Fountain gets one out of two at the free throw line, missed the second one. The final seconds are going to tick off the clock, a shot at the buzzer. Won't go, that'll do it. And the Huskies win 81-72. They go to 12-6 in the Southland Conference, 17-12 overall. And who knows how much more basketball is left in this season. But we know it's not over yet. We'll come back and put a wrap on this one, though, when we return with the Huskies postgame report after this on the Husky Sports Network. Travel isn't what it used to be. By the time you get where you're going, you've been through it all. So what if you knew there was a hotel that understands how hard your journey's been and spends all its time making up for it? At Doubletree by Hilton, with more than 325 wonderful destinations around the world, we welcome our guests with a warm chocolate chip cookie. Our cookie serves as a symbol of our commitment to turn every little detail of your stay into a delight. Preparing every comfort with care, making every touch special, and every gesture true. Giving that extra attention to the simple things. Bringing humanity back to business and leisure travel. So you can reconnect, relax, play, focus, smile. Welcome to Doubletree by Hilton. Where the little things mean everything. Texans, I love having a good time on the water. But remember, nobody's waterproof. Play it safe. Wear a life jacket and designate a driver for the boat and for a safe ride home. Follow these tips and there'll be a lot more days for you to play 
in this great state of Texas. Nobody's waterproof, yeah, that's a helmet truth, and you know it ain't no lie. Sponsored by Texas Parks and Wildlife. A firefighter's duty. Fighting fires, rescuing citizens, performing copious kettlebell exercises, demands a daring degree of readiness, a degree of readiness achieved, eating fulfillingly flavorful firehouse subs. With premium carved meats and cheeses, steamed to tasty magnificence, then piled onto toasted rolls. Is your footwear connected to your pants? No, it's not, because you're not a firefighter. But you can be ready like one. Firehouse subs, the hero of all subs. What's it mean for the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, Local 716, to send someone to your job site? It means electricians that pass basic trigonometry, calculus, or algebra are sent to your job site. It means electricians familiar with OSHA compliance are sent to your job site. It means IBW electricians made a conscious decision to improve their life and the lives of others. What does it mean? It means everything. To be the best, hire the best. The time is now to hire IBEW. Are you looking for a totally free checking account? Houston Federal Credit Union has it, and it's packed with free services like mobile banking with person-to-person -person transfers and mobile bill pay. And Houston Federal Credit Union is a proud supporter of HBU Athletics. So stop by their office at 6808 Bentliff Drive and experience a better way of banking. Visit HoustonFCU.org for more information. Houston Federal Credit Union, the official credit union of HBU. Houston Federal Credit Union is federally insured by NCUA. At Doubletree by Hilton, we believe in nice. Not your okay, fine, just being polite kind of nice, but a genuine nice. The kind that's contagious, that you can't help but take with you. The kind of nice you want to share with others. But don't take our word for it. Come for a stay and help us prove nice travels. Book at Doubletree.com. Tammy and I have been going steady since high school. Tammy and Tommy, two peas in a pod, as they say. We have all the same friends. We like all the same things. I mean, we practically even have the same name. But there's one thing we could just never agree on. Soda. <sighs> I have been begging him all these years to just try Pepsi, and I knew he would change his tune. Yeah, yeah. So, finally, I had him take the Pepsi taste challenge. And go on, tell him what you told me, Tommy. <sighs> I'm a Pepsi man. Mmm. Right? Gosh, isn't Pepsi so good? I tell you what, I don't know why I didn't try it sooner. Me neither. It's so crisp and refreshing and bubbly. Like me. Like you. I'm always right. She's always right. <laughs> All across the South, people are choosing the great taste of Pepsi. Take the Pepsi Taste Challenge and let your taste decide. <laughs> Be his first day back in a bed, not surrounded by hospital monitors. Be his first awkward dance at prom, his interview at his first real job. When you join the Be The Match Marrow Registry, you unlock the power to save a life and all the living that comes with it. Be his memory of warm summer nights surrounded by fireflies. Be his tent beneath the stars, his perfectly sharpened marshmallow stick, and his first burnt marshmallow. Go to BeTheMatch.org to find more information on the power inside you and the life-threatening diseases that power can heal. With a simple swab from inside your cheek, you'll be a registered marrow donor. Be his freedom on the open road. His first traffic ticket. His first, and if he can help it, his last opera. Thousands of patients, young and old, are searching for a match. Be the one to save a life. Take the first step at BeTheMatch.org. This is the HBU Husky Sports Network, powered by Legacy Sports. Back here at the Sharp Tank in uh, Sharp, Texas, on the campus of Houston Baptist University, Lonnie King. Welcoming you in to the HBU Huskies post-game report here. Huskies basketball finishes the regular season on a winning note. Ninth game in a row that they've come away with a W. 70, or check it, 81-72, the final score tonight as the Huskies come from a three-point halftime deficit and, in fact, uh, 
Trailed by as many as nine points in the first half of this game tonight. Um, before closing to within three at the half. And just never could quite get over the hump in that first half, but came out in the second half, outscored Abilene Christian by a dozen points, 51-39, and they come away with a nine-point victory, 81-72. to Huskies did the job by shooting 67% from the floor, 18 of 27 in the second half. They were 7 of 13 at the three-point line. They 12 of 20 overall from the arc tonight. 60% shooting. They shot 52.6% for the game. 30 of, se- uh, 30 of 57 from the floor. And they were 9 of 15 at the free throw line. So they were as effective from the three point line tonight as they were from the charity stripe. Uh, but it's all good when you come away with the W. Abilene Christian shot well tonight. Uh, They were 53.8% in the first half, but the Huskies slowed them down a little bit in the second half. Still wind up 30 of 59 for the evening, 50.8. But where the Huskies did manage to slow them down a little bit was at the three-point line. They're a very good three-point shooting team up in the 40 percentile area. But tonight shooting 8 of 24, a little bit below their average. And uh, so the Huskies... Managed to shoot well from the three-point line. Hold them in check a little bit from the three-point line, and that spelled the difference for an HBU win. Huskies with a five-board advantage tonight. They are the leading rebounding team and the leading rebounding margin team in the conference. And revealed Chukwajekwu leads away with a dozen boards, 12 of the 33 rebounds that the Huskies got. Huskies with a 10-6 edge on the offensive boards. 23-22 23-22 advantage on the defensive boards. Huskies protected the ball very well tonight, too. Just nine turnovers in this game. Abilene Christian with just 11. Weren't a lot of fouls to go around in the game. Huskies just eight total fouls in this contest, and some of that uh, can be attributed to the way the officials let a lot go in this game, but the Huskies played good defense as well a lot of the time and forced Abilene Christian into awkward shots. We had a couple of shot clock violations as well, and Huskies uh, forced 11 turnovers, turned that into 14 points off turnovers. If you look up and down the stat sheet, there's not a whole lot to differentiate these two teams other than the three-point shooting where the Huskies shot 60% 60% from the three-point line, and Abilene Christian shot 33%. So we'll chalk up the victory to that stat right there and note that five Huskies finished in double-digit scoring tonight. 20 points for Atif Russell to lead the way. Uh, 13, or check it, 18 for Coulter Lasher. 18 points, five rebounds, and a couple of assists for the Colt. 13 points for Josh Ibarra. Josh not getting the start tonight as Coach Cottrell went with all seniors this evening. 11 for Braxton Bonds and 10 for Reveal Chukwajekwu to go along with his 12 rebounds. So again, Reveal in this nine game winning streak averaging a double double and he keeps that alive tonight with 10 points and 12 boards. He also dished out five assists in the game as well. So the Huskies winners tonight. We're going to take a quick timeout. When we come back, we'll be joined by the head coach of the Huskies, Ron Cottrell, straight ahead on the Huskies Sports Network. The body is incredibly powerful. It's so nimble and fluid, but sometimes we push it too far. That's when you need the strength of Memorial Hermann and our body of affiliated orthopedic specialists. With our renowned Ironman Sports Medicine Institute, they not only get your body back to where it was, They get it to go further. It's what makes us more than just hospitals. We are a body of experts. Memorial Hermann, advancing health. 
At Houston Federal Credit Union, we're dedicated to our members, our communities, and now the students, faculty, and employees of Houston Baptist University. From checking and savings accounts to loans, IRAs, money markets, and other financial tools, HFCU is ready to serve the HBU Huskies and their fans. Learn more today. Call 866-OUR-HFCU or log on to HoustonFCU.org. Houston Federal Credit Union and the HBU Huskies, that's a doggone good team. Houston Federal Credit Union is federally insured by NCUA. If you drive around in Texas, dude, you could be a polluter and that's just rude. But there's a way to help keep the air clean. Got to take care of your machine. It's the one with wheels, speedometer. This message goes out to both the sexes. Take care of your car. Drive clean across Texas. Keep your engine tuned, keep air in the tires, make friends with a mechanic, that's a guy with pliers. Please don't speed, that pollutes to the max. Don't sit there and I'll turn it off, relax. Read the paper, meditate. Combine errands if you can, carpool, fill up with gas after dark when it's cool. If you see some car spitting out smoke, they're messing with the air, and that's no joke. The message is simple, it shouldn't perplex us. Take care of your car, drive clean across Texas. Doesn't matter if you drive a Ford or a Lexus, take care of your car, drive clean across Texas. Brought to you by the Texas Department of Transportation and the Texas Natural Resource Conservation Commission. Drive clean across Texas. Ten years of intensity. Ten years of dumps. Ten years of three-pointers. Ten years of drives. Ten years of teamwork. Ten years of leadership. 10 years of hustle, 10 years of champions, a decade in Katy. The 2017 Southland Basketball Tournament, March 8th through the 12th at the Merrill Center. Go to Ticketmaster.com or Southland School Ticket Offices. This is the HBU Husky Sports Network, powered by Legacy Sports. And back here at the Sharp Tank, one final time tonight, and joined by the head coach of the Huskies, winners tonight over the Abilene Christian Wildcats. 81-72 is the final score. Ninth win in a row for your Huskies, and hottest team in the conference going into the we're tournament passionate. next week. And we're joined by Ryan Cottrell, the head coach. And coach, uh, it didn't come easy tonight. I would imagine there was a little bit of extra adrenaline flowing because it was senior night and uh, everybody pumped up a little bit. And it, it seemed like it took a little while to get into the flow of this game. Yeah, and, and that's not that unusual in a, in a senior game when you, when you change up your rotations a little bit and guys are kind of hyped up and, and ready to go. And, and uh, you know, the seniors obviously have the adrenaline run a little bit more than, than normal. And so it – it takes you a little while to kind of get yourself into a flow, and, and really it took us basically the whole first half to really settle in. And, you know, in, towards the end of the first half, I thought we started playing a little bit better. And then second half, we got our rotations down to a more normal rotation, and I thought our guys uh, did a good job of just kind of taking one possession at a time defensively uh, and really pounding it into Josh, making them have to guard him. And then Atif got on a roll, and, and Coulter started hitting some threes. And, you know, we talked with our guys all the time about it being a team game. And with us, it's, it's all about, you know, whoever's hot and whoever's got it going and, and move the ball and get it to the next guy. And, and uh, we're going we're gonna to play as a team to get this done. You talked about the defense. And, and I thought, you know, even though they got out to it, you, you talked to me before the game about what a good three-point shooting team they can be. And they started out pretty hot. Farquhar I didn't think was going to miss yeah. all night long at the start there. But. I thought you did a pretty good job of clamping down. You held them to 33% from the three-point line, which all things considered I think is yeah. pretty good considering Yeah, the I think start they're there. averaging 38 or 39 yeah. in conference play, and, and we knew that was going to be a key to the game. And, yeah, the Farquhar is a really good perimeter shooting big man, and that's a tough matchup with, with Josh. Yeah. You know, but there's give and take in that of, of they've got to guard Josh inside <laughs> as well. And, and so we were having to kind of play with that. That's why we went zone for a little bit. Yeah. to try to do what we could to protect Josh from having to guard out on the floor quite as much, but yet be able to keep him in the game. And so it was, you know, it was a little bit of back and forth with what their rotations and our rotations as coaches to try to, try to you know, see who could get the upper hand there. And, and uh, you know, I, our guys, I thought in the second half, just, just answered the bell and did a great job. 
It was it was very intense, a, a physical game. It looked like the officials were letting a lot go, and, yeah. and and that sometimes can take a while to get used to when you when you're going in or driving and you're expecting a call at contact and you don't get it. Uh, talk about how how sometimes it takes a while to adapt to those kind of calls. Yeah, you know, officiating is is an interesting <laughs> thing. It's uh, and that's that's as nicely as I can put it. You never know from one night to the next kind of how the game's going to be called uh, and what they're looking for. And, and I, I thought there were a lot of things inside that, that, that were let go. Uh, you know, I mean, anytime Josh, you know, Josh plays 28 minutes and goes six out of 10 from the field and only goes to the free throw line twice, that's, yeah. that's a pretty unusual number for him uh, because he's going to be in there pounding and, and banging and, and trying, to, trying to get, you know, finishes at the rim. And, Usually he's getting fouled a little bit more than that, but um, you know it's just part of the game. You have to you have to adjust officiating every night, and and we as coaches and players as well have to kind of figure out what it is they're looking for and and uh, and kind of how to play through some things. You know, one of the guys that uh, has really stood out, and I know there were some times this season earlier this year that you and I would visit, and, and we talked about him struggling a little bit, but uh, in this winning streak for you revealed Chuku Jaku has averaged a double double and and yeah. again tonight I thought he was just clutch at various times in this game some big rebounds for you and, and those yeah. were almost as critical as his 10 points that he put in yeah and that's you know when he's in the game we know that we've got a pretty good advantage on the glass he had nine rebounds at the half yeah. uh, ended up with 12 uh, he's leading the league in number of double doubles um, he's just such a a, a, a steady stellar player for us particularly on the defensive end and on the glass offensively he can get himself a little uh playing a little quick at times and that's one of the things that when he's when he's not going well he's trying to do too many things too fast and we have to try to slow him down a little bit but tonight he was he was playing really well and you know he's another one of those seniors playing his last time in sharp and and he was pretty pretty geared up to go tonight and and uh you know the main thing is he uses that energy towards defending and rebounding and that's a good thing and then once he kind of gets into a flow he can get what get going what he needs to offensively another one of those guys playing his last game here was Atif Russell and, yeah. and Atif is another guy who in this streak for you has really become a key offensive weapon for you. We've talked about his defense a lot, and that's important, but yeah. he's really added a lot offensively lately. Yeah, he really did did some really good things in that middle part of the second half when we when we made that run. Um, he, he You could see it in his eyes. He he, he had that feeling. You know, he, <laughs> yeah. he, he knew that he had, had some advantages, and he had he had – had it going, a little adrenaline going. He felt good about his shot. And, and uh, when he's got that going, he's pretty tough because he can get to the rim and finish through contact. But he also was knocking down uh, perimeter shots tonight as well. Well, the way things shook out in the other games tonight, it looks like we're going to be the number four seed. Yeah, that's going what I heard. In, that's uh, what I heard. Next week. So you get a night off. Uh, it, you know, thinking about having the, the, the two nights off, it may be a little bit of a blessing in disguise that you don't have to sit around for a couple of nights. Yeah, I've always thought that the two buys can be can be a double-edged sword. It it's great to have that honor of getting the two buys, and it's great to have a chance to kind of get a little rest and and see everything. But at the same time, those other teams are are getting on a roll a little bit yeah. and 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 you know playing pretty well and and have won a couple games before you see them. And so that's that's also tough as well. And so you know I I would have loved to have been uh, you know conference co-champ if that would have worked out today or or you know, even a second or third seed, but we'll take where we are. The main thing we know is there's eight teams going to, to Katy, and any any of the eight could win it. Uh, I mean, it is as, as evenly matched as it's been since I've been in the league, and obviously we haven't been in a long time, but talking to other people who have been around for quite a while know that it's, it's, it's pretty balanced in, this year, and, and uh, it's going to be an interesting interesting time in Katy, that's for sure. Do you have any preferences? As to I, honestly, I don't even know what, who, who the other two are that we might be playing. I, <laughs> I, I, I don't even want to think about it. Well, happy. that I can tell you the eight, there's about five teams right now that finished up seven and 11, and I don't have any idea what the tiebreakers oh are. So I, it may be halfway through tomorrow before we know who the eighth team yeah, is. Yeah, the conference <laughs> sent, out, uh, sent out different scenarios today, and I think there were 40 scenarios on the sheet of things that could happen tonight. Uh -huh. and. And so, you know, who knows? We'll 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 go back in there and, and they'll they'll figure it out and, and we'll play whoever wins on Wednesday night. All right, we'll see you over in Katie. All right, sounds good.
Ron Cottrell, the head coach of the Huskies. We're going to take one final timeout and come back and put a wrap on this. And the regular season will be done on the Huskies postgame report. Adults and children. We're dedicated, responding to neurotrauma and stroke with LifeLight in our Level 1 Trauma Center. We're persistent, restoring lives at our Tier Rehabilitation and Research Hospital. We are Memorial Hermann. And we're making neuroscience breakthroughs every day. This is the HBU Husky Sports Network, powered by Legacy Sports. Back here at Sharp Gym, Lonnie King with you one final time this evening. The final time we'll be here at the Sharp Tank in the 2017 season. And the Huskies will make it a big, happy celebration with an 81-72 victory over the Abilene Christian Wildcats. Huskies go to 17-12 overall. 12 and 6 in the conference. They'll drop Abilene Christian to 13 and 16 and 7 11 in Southland Conference play. Abilene Christian, of course, not eligible for the Southland tournament, but uh, they will factor into uh, as part of those five teams that finish up at 7 11 in the conference. Check hbuhuskies.com tomorrow. We should have things sorted out. We'll know who the 5-8 matchup's gonna be for Wednesday night. And the Huskies will play the winner of that one on uh, Thursday. So check back in. And if you can't make it out to Katie, join us right here on the Husky, Husky Sports Network next Thursday night. And uh, until then, for everyone that brought you this one, I'm Lonnie King from Sharp Gym, thanking all of you for being a part of it tonight here on the Huskies Sports Network. So long, dogs up everybody.